uh, when you when you try this for let's say like a thousand cycles right i mean how many you are winning how many you are losing you have to have that kind of a conviction otherwise you 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 cannot sustain <laughs> All right, welcome everybody to another episode of Speaking Greeks. Um, it's been a while since we recorded. Uh, this time we have a good friend of ours. Uh, he goes by the name of Nash. You might know him by NK Ready if you hang out in the discords. Um, we're going to talk about his journey, and uh, he just recently launched a fund. So um, we're going to talk about the process of launching a hedge fund. And a uh, real quick disclaimer, and I'll probably repeat it again a little later in the episode, but um there's some there's some rules and regulations when it comes to marketing hedge funds so i just want to be very clear that this is not a this is not an advertisement or a marketing of any specific funds um it's it's more informational on the process of starting a fund so uh yeah i just really wanted to talk to nash and get the story on i guess first how he started to get into trading and then we're going to talk about how that naturally evolved into a uh a fund manager position. Um, so yeah, go ahead, Nash, if you want to take it away and do a brief introduction about yourself, and then we can uh, go from there. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, as you guys know that, you know, I, I'm, I'm NKRD Discord, uh, you know, my my trading journey started, like I'm, I'm 44, by the way, uh, I'm 44. My trading journey started in 2007. Uh, I work for a large financial bank um, as a software developer, but you know I'm on a garden leave currently. Uh, so, but, you know, uh, I I worked in this in this space uh, in the financial space for like uh, 20 years now. Uh, this was the only first and last job that I you know that 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 I envisioned to work uh, before I started a hedge fund. So how the journey started, right? Back in the day, like 2007, I mean, you know, my wife was always saying, I mean, I have a heavy math background, but, you know, because of this, my wife always pushes me that, you know, you got to do something in the stock market, you know, but but I always say, if there is an easy way to make money, that means, uh, you know, it's it's not going to stay for long, meaning, uh, you know, I, I don't believe in that stuff. It has to come with hard work, dedication, discipline, right? It's Otherwise, you know, I, I don't believe that that money is going to stay. So I I always, you know, I was a long-term investor, like, uh, you know, when I started my career, 2003, 2004 time frame, you know, uh, pretty much, uh, like, you know, we opened an IRA account, uh, you know, uh, went with the mutual funds, traditional investment, investing ideas, basically. So in 2007, um, when in one of these get-togethers, right, uh, a friend of mine was uh, full drunk, uh, you know, completely drunk and uh, he showed me on his phone, like, you know, how he is making like 200, 300, like 500 on earning trades. I was like, you know, knowing the knowing the psychology and mentality of that person, um, I I felt, uh, you know, it's uh, tough to believe that, you know, this guy is putting 20,000 uh, in a trade just to make like two, 300. I was like, I was non-believer actually. But, uh, you know, it, it got, I got fascinated. Meaning, some there is something in this. Meaning, he's doing something that you know where he's able to make money. So, uh, I you know I quickly uh, you know opened the options. So, you know, uh, one of the uh, I, I called one of the brokers and uh, you know we I opened the option uh, you know uh, training account. This was in 2017. You know, uh, so obviously I lost money 2017. Uh, it was small money, something like you know. 20,000 not much but I was learning uh, you know always like meaning I was buying something in the assumption that it's gonna go up or go down this and that right uh, and I didn't even knew what I was doing like what is the meaning of a delta what I'm buying why I'm buying you know none of this was like you know I have no idea because I just got introduced to options uh, I was watching the tasty videos, uh, you know, at the simultaneously. But again, those, uh, you know, whatever the terminology that they use, uh, it's it's not possible to understand in a in a quick, uh, you know, uh, the one or two meetings. I Meaning when I was watching the sessions, right? So, but I was I was keep continuously watching because the math kind of fascinates me. Uh, so, 2017 lost money. 18 lost money. 2018 uh, as well in 19 up to mid like june or so i lost money i was thinking what am i doing you know if i'm losing money somebody else is also making money 
you know the and why am i on the wrong side of equation in every single time meaning i was winning something like you know not that i was losing everything but you win one you make like 200 but you are losing like you know 10 trades like you lost 2000 uh, it was like a cycle so i was like you know something is wrong meaning uh, you know i'm always on the wrong side of the equation you know and i have to be on the right side of equation to start seeing the money so 2019 i started uh, doing put selling uh, again you know put selling i have no idea what to do what not to do i know basic stuff something like you know put selling means you want to acquire shares at a discounted price you need to wait for like it's like insurance policy you're giving uh, to somebody to protect their shares or something right so uh, but but i mean i was watching the tasty videos again and again and i used to make a lot of notes uh, meaning whatever their uh, analysis or theses that used to come up i used to make a lot of notes and i concluded that you know put selling is the way to go uh then uh, you know uh, that uh, you know i was making money like 19 i was uh, you know i scratched off like a uh, little bit here and there that but, but again at the same time i was also buying stuff meaning you know i was uh, buying a put thinking that it's going to go down or buying a call thinking that it's going to go up and it was it th- that buying was always there for me uh so but, but i decided in 2000 like you know uh 20 that you know i should not do that but i was still doing those mistakes meaning you cannot stop uh, you know buying something thinking that you know yeah nvidia is going to go up this earning it's just a hope anticipation that never stopped but what happened was uh 2020 i made about uh, like a double digit return uh, you know meaning like something reasonable um, uh, for my money uh, i was happy that you know the the selling is kind of working um, uh 2021 uh, same story i bumped up my numbers uh, you know significantly like three times four times uh, and i i was my only goal was to make some kind of a double digit return nothing much uh then 2021 i was able to accomplish that um, uh, and uh, 2000 fast forward 2022 2022 january 1 i i pumped up even more meaning uh, now we are talking about like you know uh, half a million plus my uh, own money uh, that i started trading the transition was not smooth meaning uh, uh, like you know you just can jump from 20000 to 100000 then 100 to 500 it's it, the transition is not smooth meaning uh, you have to train your brain uh, to see the losses and uh, you know and you have to believe that you know this is reasonable loss and uh, it's not a big deal because you know over the time this is all acceptable kind of stuff so in 2000 believe it or not when i started in 2022 uh, i lost money like for, for 14 15 trading days in, in january i was like you know again i was upset uh, that you know i bumped up the numbers again my mind is not able to accept um i do rigorous uh, like you know what do you call uh, exercise yoga uh, basically just you know when i say yoga a lot of people will laugh saying that you know oh, why do you do that this and that but to train your brain uh, to you know to to make it calm in a in a in a situation where you know you don't need to act uh, because the market is doing something else you have to believe the probabilities you have to believe the like you know the math behind it um and uh, over the time right all these times 17 18 19 i was looking for like you know some strategy that works in any environment like up and down and it's not easy to find uh, you know uh, a strategy that works uh, in 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 all the environments so uh, the zero days to expiration again a lot of people will think that you know there is a lot of risk involved i don't uh, I, you know disagree to them that there is a lot of risk uh, involved there there is absolutely astonishingly uh, you know more risk involved in zero days to expiration but if you are able to control those uh, you know if you if you are able to honor your stops very well then you know uh, there is a there is a big money to be made meaning a reasonable uh, re- uh, risk return is possible that's what i was able to like you know fi- find out uh, i consider few people uh, in our group i just don't want to mention their names but uh, you know because i did not take their permission i consider them as my mentors whenever i feel like you know in the low grounds or something right i just reach out to them uh, saying that you know uh, this is what happened what do you think i should do and uh, they they graciously you know i don't know any of these people meaning i never spoke to them but it's just through chatting so the point is you have to reach uh, the any of the persons that you consider as mentors just reach out to them trust me there is a lot of goodwill still still there in the humanity and you know only strangers i believe i strongly believe that you know the strangers will help you more than somebody whom you know you know for a long time so reach out to them and ask for their suggestion you know they will graciously spend the time and uh, i was fortunate that you know these guys are like you know spending their like 5 10 minutes when i'm reaching out you know uh, just for asking questions you know what i'm supposed to do this is what happened uh, kind of a stuff uh, so along this journey 
uh, like you know in 2000 when covid hit uh, as well right i mean uh, we we were like not going anywhere uh, from the house uh, the, we, we we formed small groups in the local community and i i, I started giving uh, like you know some kind of presentations on put selling meaning how you can bring up like you know boost your return on a on your long term portfolio that kind of a stuff so they, they you know those guys were always behind me like you know naresh i'll give you this money it's uh, you know no questions asked like you know no questions asked uh, uh, you know you you even if it goes to zero i don't have a problem but you do what you're doing i was always hesitant because you know i wanted to grow my money first i mean of course and i have to have a some kind of a track record to prove to these guys uh, before i can take their money but i still accepted some small amount from these guys and uh, you know i started managing 21 22 we did not do well meaning like you know small returns like 10 to 12 percent for them but i did like double digit like you know 24 plus percent but 2022 also you know they were behind me again the increasing the numbers and i said you know i accepted uh, you know but i was managing all manually it was not an easy easy thing uh, then uh, you know the transition came uh, mid of uh, like you know the, uh, starting this year that i started accepting uh, like you know uh, managing their money in ibkr because in ibkr you could be an advisor and you know you can add all these accounts as a sub accounts as your ch child's accounts and uh, you know when i enter enter a position in uh, uh, my my parent account it subsequent all the child accounts could automatically be uh, you know get the same trade depending on their size the contracts will increase decrease uh, it was it was going well but again you know when i started managing like seven eight accounts it was it was again like a too much painful over the time i i just could not do it so uh, back of the mind i was always wanted to open a fund um, meaning it's it's it would be a lot easier if i pull all this money into one place and you know trade it one place like um, i became comfortable in e trade uh, they don't have a product for hedge fund so i'm i'm venturing into ibkr so i started you know with ibkr and you know uh, uh, the the fund will be live from uh, june 1 uh, i already raised money we, we the whatever initial round of capital that i'm happy with i was able to raise that money within a short period of time and uh, the, you know the trading will start from june 1 so that's the that's my journey uh, meaning like you know but again it was it was not a easy thing uh, i was i i used to spend like you know 30 40 hours a week just listening to videos writing notes um, you know writing some bullet points to see what what i understood then i used to go back and you know uh, uh, but again like as i said right uh, if you have a right mentor uh, you you will be able to like you know fast forward your journey you know much much faster that was awesome there were so many uh, so many good tidbits of information so i want to back up so you said you're a software dev for a large yes. bank, for like a large financial institution, software developer. Okay, so like, what do you do on that side of things? Is it so, like, is it related to trading, or is it more just like app development, or it is it is just the, like you know we support some kind of an internal application. We are no way connected to this uh, trading application. Meaning, uh, you know, uh, if 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 somebody things that i was like you know getting this knowledge from the financial application we have no connection my my app is it's an internal application which just manages the people data you know we have no connection i'm just a software developer gotcha yeah no i, I was just wondering if there was any kind of overlap and or if it was just like you're a software developer that works for a large financial institution or if like you were a software developer that was like building trading like trading tools or uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> some kind of money management tool right. or something like that right. but yeah and then you said in 2017 you opened your first options account. What were you trading then? Were you sticking kind of like to the the tasty way? Uh, no, see the tasty way is selling, right? So I was just buying something like say, oh, uh, you know, Apple is gonna go up. Uh, let me buy uh, this call. I I didn't knew what I was doing. Meaning like you know to buy a 30 delta call versus like you know I was thinking okay, let me go a little bit further down where you know if it is two dollars, right? If you let me buy the one dollar because that's what I can afford. But without knowing what I was playing with, right? I mean I lost all of those things. Meaning I used to win small, but the lot uh, you know uh, when I say the risk is like you know you make 200 but you're losing like 1000 I didn't know what I was doing honestly you know by see for me right now I have a big board uh, that sits on top of my desk it says buying is losing so I I, I I've stopped doing any of the buying things meaning I don't buy call I don't buy put 
two to three percent of the oh, my portfolio has any kind of a buy position meaning if i am a very very uh, you know bullish on something like you know for example at nclh uh, i was bullish for a long time so i have some like you know uh, leaps uh, sitting there but other than like you know, two as i said two to three percent only and you you mentioned that you lost money what uh, 2017 2018 and half of 2019 until you started selling options yes how how did you how did you keep going forward like that's so, two and a half years of like that one step forward three steps back like, <laughs> that had to have been a that had to have been a drag on your psyche uh it it was there but you know uh, because you know we, we were we me and my wife we, we both were working and uh, the losing like the, you know, 20 000 30 000 year over year it was not a big thing i was i was considering that as a educational expense and uh, I, I knew there was something there in this market market which i am not able to understand yet that was my psychology and uh, you know i have a as i said that i have a heavy math background uh, right from the like you know my childhood uh, you know uh, statistics probability permutations and combinations all these things right so i knew there is something sitting in the market which i am not able to understand yet that was my psychology to go forward and oh i lost my screen there um I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. Yeah, so yeah, I, I think we've all had that kind of like light bulb moment where, uh, like, I, I guess that's whenever I discovered like zero DTE is I was just yoloing like massive iron condors on Tasty Works, and it wasn't until I took a big hit and I was like, well, like I, I knew there was something there, yeah, but it was kind of finding my community of people that were also doing the same thing where I could actually start applying some kind of rules and mechanics. Cause I didn't know what I was doing either. I was seeing probability of profit 99% right. and just swinging for the fences every time. Yeah. So the thing is, the, the, the thing is every strategy that tasty uh, mentions. Now I have a uh, policy, meaning let's say if I'm doing uh, some kind of a cupboard strangle, for example, right. Meaning on NV. So one thing, one thing I, I want to mention, you want to get experience at the same time you want to get the experience at a minimum expense meaning when i say minimum expense learn from other people see so for example that you read through oh i got i have a short position in nvidia you know i sold uh, you know it was a 303 the expected move was 30 bucks you know i sold 350 it, it spears through my short what am i supposed to do you read these comments often right so you don't want to experience that uh, uh, and at the same time learn from that meaning like you know uh, I, I learned basically i started writing if i have a short position on a put side i don't need to have any protection it's okay what would happen is the worst case the stock goes to zero it's not a big deal you know let's say you you have a hundred dollar strike you're not losing heavy but if you have something a short position on a call side you want to be protected because you see these stocks, right? Like, for example, AMC, GME, Carvana, one day, there is a, there, you know, there is a company called Top, right? I mean, it went from like, you know, seven, eight standard deviations in one day, three minute candle uh, over like, you know, after hours, it went from like, uh, if I'm not wrong, $10 to 260 in the three minutes. And there are big, big firms, they went bankrupt because they had no protection on the call side. So we have to learn from them. So I started thinking if i do a covered strangle right why am i doing a covered strangle because i want to be protected if the stock moves a massive move i have the shares to give them you know take them it's not a big deal but when i sell a put selling i don't have any protection it's not a big deal i don't lose too crazy meaning it, if it goes to zero it goes to zero it's not a big deal right and uh, i and i the second note says I started making uh, like, you know, uh, I'm not going to touch any kind of stupid stocks, which I don't understand. Meaning like, you know, it has to be a notable stock. Even if I make less money, it's not a big deal. Uh, and uh, again, right. The, that is, the, that is only like, you know, maybe 10% of my portfolio does this put selling on these stocks. 90% is on the indexes only like a spy SPX. You know, I started venturing into, uh, you know, the zero days to expiration is primarily guaranteed. No doubt. Then, you know, I start, I start, you know, I started venturing into iron flies. I, I used to do iron flies, but again, I, the risk reward, I did not understand. Meaning I was hoping that, you know, Oh, this is, this is going to bounce bounce back up then you know it's going to go break even this and that i was losing 800 but i was making like two three hundred i did not understand any of those things now i'm in a stable position to uh you know get the idea of like you know once you control risk reward right i mean if the strategy is legit as long as you as long as you honor your stops you know uh, the, if there is a light at the end of the tunnel i will continue it you know
So, the, so coming back, learn from other people's mistake. At the same time, you know, try not to make them. And if you are in the in that shoes, be protective, right? I, I mean, I I knew a company that lost like you know twelve thirteen million, uh, just be just on one stock top. In a three minute candle, it went from seven dollars to two sixty, and uh, you know the broker just liquidated the all assets. You know uh, that that's so path- like you know it's very painful. So if I I decided myself, my fund will only do SPX, SPY, and uh, you know I mentioned four or five stocks. Uh, we are going to sell um, a one week, uh, you know, uh, one standard deviation uh, calls and puts. Uh, I will have the shares of it just in case if they are called away. But uh, those are the only three strategies at the that i plan to do yeah i agree with what you're saying about uh learning from others mistakes like i actually was reading a post earlier on on facebook of uh someone that was trapped in a naked call with nvidia and yeah. wondering what to do and it's painful man because then you get a ton, a ton of comments and like some of them are just you know the wall street bets ask rubbing it in their face other right, people are just yeah. roll it and uh, yeah, it's tough. It's tough. But yeah, like you said, the especially on the call side. I mean, call side losses are infinite. Whereas, like you said, if it goes put, if it's the put side, you know, it goes to zero. Like it, it, it's the right. max risk right. is capped. Yeah, like you can't go and below another zero. thing uh, that I that I that I wanted to mention was, um, you know, if you are trying anything with futures. You have to understand what are the consequences of uh, you know selling a put uh, in in futures. It, this happened to me. That's why I, ha- I had to mention this, right? I learned it in a hard way. Remember that oil fiasco, right? Meaning it went to negative. So <laughs> yeah, there's the famous the famous story of the Wall Street bets guy that so that bought the negative priced yeah. oil. So and had what happened delivery. was yeah. uh, it was a one dollar strike put that I sold. Meaning in, in oil, uh, when I say one dollar, right, the max you lose is thousand because it can go to zero. And believe it or not, the taste he was giving thirteen hundred actually. You know, credit. I was like three hundred. I'm not going to lose this. This 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 can go to zero. I I can make three hundred bucks. Like you know, just a one week time frame or something. I only sold luckily one contract. Believe it or not, when the expiration came like two three days before, I was like you know uh, I I I uh, I wanted to close and there are no buyers available. Broker called me and he says, "Okay, where should you? Where are you coming to deliver this uh, oil? And you have this many barrels that you are supposed to keep it." In. I'm like, "What are you doing? I mean, I cannot do this. <laughs> you won't believe they charged six grand just to just to you know the storage. That was the storage cost for one month. So I said." You know, oh, I, so you I had, to, I take had to take it, but I told them I cannot take the assignment. Yeah? No matter whatever the loss is, I just want to absorb it. And uh, you know, they, 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 they took some money and uh, they, they absorbed the cost. But later on, in a month or a month time frame, because of uh, I was trading in Tasty, they gave back, if I remember correctly, like you know, fifty, sixty percent. This was this was right in the COVID time, actually. So again, that was an experience, right? So I realized, you know, if you are touching futures, even the gold futures, silver futures, or any kind of oil futures, right? Understand that you know, if the things go south, you have to you are responsible to 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 accept the assignment and you know the storage cost cost would be much much higher than you know <laughs> what you're seeing on the screen <laughs> yeah i think there's a disconnect and like it's easy to forget that that whenever you're just especially in future oh well def only in futures really you 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 have to take right. physical delivery like those are real yeah. tangible things that you're trading and that's that's kind of the allure like i know that um future strangles are a pretty popular topic in the speaking greeks discord and uh that that's kind of the allure to it too though is that there's you can't right. really manipulate corn prices or whatever because there's like a tangible item behind it so it's it's a little more stable but um yeah i i didn't know you had to take assignment on that or or we're being threatened with assignment i mean you imagine i I am i'm selling one put and there is no buyer (laughs) to act i'm like (laughs) it was crazy but but i realized it (laughs) all the all the smart money knew what was about to happen So okay, so it's 2020. Everybody's on lockdown, and you're forming little trading groups and giving presentations on put selling. So, like, what I guess what what were you teaching people? Just kind of like so uh, I 
i was i was you know um i started designing some kind of equations right designing the equation for example right let's say you i was asking the question to the viewers when i was giving presentation what stock do you like apple uh, apple is running at 100 uh, how much uh, like you know at what price do you want to own the apple they'll come back and say some ridiculous price let's say 75 right so i'll tell them okay 75 so you are mentally ac- ready to accept the shares of apple at 75 right so go back uh to 90 days or something because you may not get because apple is such a stable company right so 75 think of any kind of a premium that you are getting right you keep selling that every single week you know uh, every every thursday friday go there and uh, sell 90 days out you know if it is available the most popular one was that i taught was 45 days meaning uh, you know if they if if one of the user says like i'm okay to uh, accept apple at 90 then you know you have lot of options right you open the chain and uh, i was showing them every thursday uh, go there 45 days to expiration go uh, at a strike that you are willing to accept the shares of apple so make a note like you know you are you're putting uh, your you want to accept the shares of apple at 90 you are getting Hundred dollar premium, just throwing numbers like you know randomly, and and write down how much buying power that the broker is using. You know, they w- they will not take everything. They will only take uh, you know probably fifty percent if it's a regular margin and or or some some other uh, like you know if it's a portfolio margin or if you already have some shares, they will you know the margin uh, will be reduced. So write down these things and see. So for you are getting hundred dollars for holding forty five days out and uh, you're keeping let's say. Three thousand, let's say three thousand, right? What is the return that you are getting in forty-five days? Let's say if it is four percent, for example, right? Now you do, you have to. Rep- I'm just throwing numbers again. You replicate this uh, over the time again and again, right? You know, over the one year, you are going to make at least like a double-digit return easily. Remember, these are the parameters that you accepted it, meaning the apple you wanted to own at ninety. you knew this you wanted to own so if it comes down don't be in a panic mode saying that you know apple is going down my 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 put price i got got 1 dollar now it is showing at 5 i am at loss of 400 remember go back to the first discussion you wanted to own this company at a discounted price now you are getting a discounted price accept it so i started making now i have some kind of an equation like meaning uh, it will tell me uh, how much buying power uh, meaning how much if the if the broker is taking uh, this much buying power see for example right i'll tell you as spy trades i i go 90 days out my book size is capped uh, like you know 40 positions not more than that but i go 90 days out i only want to get 100 Uh, not more than that and my buying power because of the portfolio margin and everything i have 100, they only keep 100 dollars uh, not more than that i know in a in a in a in a situations where the spy drops like 10% or the wicks goes up it's not a big deal i'm i'm looking at uh, uh, spies of uh, 305 and below some maybe or i have one or two at 310 i'm i'm all talking about 90 days out right if spy really goes to 310 i'll gladly accept the shares of spy they will become my core position right that's what my my men- mindset kind of become so what would happen is you are getting 100 dollars a uh, 90 days to go so uh, the broker is keeping 100 dollars as a collateral so you are you are doubling your money basically 100 dollars to 100 dollars so you you repeat that and you know Uh, over the time you will see some money i know there are other models where people will talk about like you know the the pcr is too crazy you know you 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 can do much better with the same capital but you know my mindset uh, says uh, at least ready uh, that you know i only want to make 100 dollars using 100 dollars i don't want to put, put 5000 to make 5000 because the risk be, again goes up uh, significantly high even if you have a million dollar account I, i don't want to have it so i i wrote these things and uh, i i started telling like you know people now i have these all these numbers like every strategy what should be the exit point right so for this pie i want to own the shares at 305 3010 it's acceptable for me okay so do you do any kind of like take profit on this 90 dt or are you just letting them run to expiration no so what would happen is um, uh, right around like i mean 12th day to 15th day onwards they will start decaying kind of crazily meaning you know irrespective of what the spy does they'll just go like you know i'll close them uh, probably at like 10 20 cents but not but i'm getting 1 uh, within 21 days if i'm able to close for 80% profit i'll do it otherwise i'll i'll i'll, I'll leave it open because my buying power is not significantly affected by holding these positions and you credit target it's, those and it's not like a delta based and you you want a dollar yeah i i just want a dollar for these things you know the spy i know it looks meaning like you know uh, it looks too small but uh, you know you have to understand you, you will have 21 positions in one month right you are making 2 grand out of uh, like you know i would say again like i mean out of thin air right i'm so it's 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 acceptable for me got it 
And then, all right. So in 2021, you became profitable. What year? Well, what year did you discover zero DTE? So in 2021, believe it or not, I was doing zero days to expiration, but not like this. Meaning, it was kind of a all in, all out kind of a stuff. And I believe, believe it or not, I used to add positions. Meaning, for example, right. So let's say uh, 9:30, we open both sides, right? Uh, let's say I got uh, 80 cents both sides credit, right? one side is getting tested meaning it uh, so i have again i wrote some numbers for example right you know if it goes to dollar 60 i'm going to add uh, like you know uh, half of the contract that i did initially if it goes to 3 dollars i'm going to add some more if it goes to 5 dollars i will add few more and uh, but i will have a hard stop when if it goes to 750 but you understand that 80 cents the initial contracts are trading at 750 that means i all i am i took 10x loss this worked very well Meaning, a lot of times, right? I mean, uh, as a zero days to expiration, you guys know right now that you know. I mean, as soon as our stops gets hit, market reverses. You know, we have seen number of times. So when I kept adding these more number of contracts on a small up move on a on a, on a move that I wanted, my my positions used to become green, and I used to just close it for like you know decent profit uh, in a day in day out. But what would happen is. Uh, it worked for like six, seven months where I had to take no losses at all. Meaning I was targeting small, meaning it was not, uh, you know, this big account that I, that I'm doing right now, but it was a small, a small account, but I was reasonably acceptable, like making like 500, 600 bucks. But uh, one day, you know, the, 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 the return would never come. Meaning, uh, you know, it's trading at 750 then because, you know, you are so much closer to the, 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 the SPX and, uh, you know, sometimes it, may, it, it will close very, very close into the money, uh, you know, at the starting of the day itself, like 11, 11 a.m. or something. So that's when you will see the real pain. So the losses would be super high. And, but I was, I was like, you know, making money for like, let's say 12 days, my loss on the 13th day would be crazy. Uh, yeah, evening it out but month after month i made money uh, you know i did not lose but um, you know it was very painful then uh, you know i was but at that time as well i was uh, as i said that i did i did not want to mention a couple of people's names whom i consider as my mentors uh, they were graciously sharing their uh, excel sheets so i was i was actively watching to see what they are doing you know i i took a loss uh, you know on this day but how these guys were profitable why you know these kinds of you know uh, why they are profitable, how they are profitable. I was just analyzing that stuff. So, I mean, remember, right, the zero days to expiration, if, if, if anybody remembers, it used to be two times entry. Like one was at 9.30, one was at uh, 1.30. That was the initial version of, uh, you know, the, the tranches kind of a thing. Then uh, again, I don't want to say the name. So again, you know, the, my mentor changed it to three times, like 9.30, 11.30 and 1.30. Again, that's, that's, a, that's a transition, right? What I did was... Uh, I took the three times and I discussed, can we enhance this to more number of times? Why not six times? Reduce the credit tar. So I started doing those things. And, uh, you know, the the, the, the the folks started calling, like, I'm not saying that I, I did these things first. I'm not saying that. I learned from a lot of good people who are in the Discord. There is no doubt. As I said, right, I consider them as my mentors. And, you know, uh, I used to watch their, uh, like, Excel sheets and, uh, you know, make notes to myself that what you should do what you should not do so zero days to expiration is like you know playing with a fire i mean you know meaning uh, you have to honor your stops you only need one bad day to wipe the whole thing so it's like i i tell my folks you know when i talk to other people that you know it's like a terrorist right meaning uh, the terrorists have to be right one time but uh, the guys who are for, you know uh, finding the bomb squad or anything right they have to be right 100% of the time to to stop any kind of a catastrophe so that's what we are doing we have to you know if you are wrong one time by leaving our stops you are done meaning uh, you know the account will be wiped out i have seen even today even this year when i'm mentoring other people they, are, they they don't agree they have some kind of a concept called like you know the uh, the the mental stop loss i tell them zero days to expiration is not a strategy where you could have a mental stop loss it's not possible you have to have a hard stop loss and uh, you know uh, believe, believe it or not i uh, i don't have any chart window open i don't keep any chart window open but once i enter i have the order page open i will be looking uh, cautiously at the order page to see whether my orders are skipping or whether they are filling if they 
fill that means great job meaning you know i don't have any slippage or any of today was bad actually in one of those you know the i think biden opened his mouth and uh, uh, you know it went up like 15 points up and uh, my my stops kind of skipped through and again you know because of the uh, e trade i mean i was doing this manually i was here and i just fixed it and uh, you know end of the day it was negative but it was a small negative which is acceptable for me you know yeah there's two things that make me cringe in zero dt trading and it's that um it, that it's set and forget and mental stops and i know that there's like a great debate especially it, it, among um there's like another discord that we have a couple members here that has to do with um stops Oh, and if if stops are appropriate and how they're implemented and because there's like this ideology that stops are bad and it's popular on, on like fintwit too where if you need a stop then your trade you don't have conviction in your trade or some some stupid mentality like that but like i i think zero dte is like a whole nother world like you know like you can't take a book and apply a lot of the traditional principles to zero dte trading absolutely not yeah so i i was i was asking this question to tom when i was talking with him so i asked him let's play a game uh, that you know uh, heads or tails if heads comes you give me a dollar if tails comes i'll give you a dollar we are doing the this for 1000 times how many times we are going to win obviously 50 50 that was yeah, of course right so i asked him what if i tell you meaning if i if i get a if i get a heads you are going to give me a dollar but if the tails comes i'll only give you 40 cents will you play this game he says why would i why would anybody play this game right but that's kind of a hedge is possible that's what we are, that's what is available uh, it, this was off air actually meaning i i did not want to speak much about uh, you know the, the I, i i specifically requested him that uh, you know we are not going to dive into just basic details so he, he said we are not going to do that so that's why i said forget it's a zero days to expiration for a second right forget that it is spx right you have two equations where either you can get a dollar or you can lose 25 cents if the parameters are accurate enough if the broker is like you know uh, you know what you call is is uh, uh, is a good broker like a, uh, i consider e trade to be a good broker and i consider eb uh, ibkr like sometimes you know they have massive slippages i'm still venturing but e trade was very good for me you know the slippages were not bad maybe three or four times over one year which is again acceptable for me right so you have forget spx forget zero days to expiration so either you can make a dollar or lose 25 cents why would anybody not play that game that's what that's what the question you have to ask but again you have some parameters to honor meaning uh, like you know you have to be ha- honor your stops you have to have a mindset of accepting these losses you know th- when you win you will win let's say uh, I, i i read i read some some of the uh, forums like uh, they you know some guys have started like one two months ago and uh, they are selling like 30 40k in a day i am like i am unable to cross selling 18000 to 20000 i asked this question to my mentors again and again like you know how can i sell 24000 can you please guide me so their answer was like they, they would laugh uh, you know in emojis as uh, of course right they'll say you are doing so well in 2022 you did so well right and why do you have this uh, uh, so i said my mind is not ready to go beyond 18k a day right 18k maybe 20k very rarely i'll go beyond 20k so the point is where the, the guys who start early you have to start slow the market is not going anywhere you know you have you have like you know long duration experience all the cycles like you know what would happen if the soft stop kind of misses what would happen you know uh, if uh, you have a bad slippage or something right how how is your brain is taking when you see a negative how you are tackling like are you okay to see so because of this fluctuations in april and may i think half of the people are out of uh, like you know doing zero days to expiration the reason is simple because you know they they put the stops at 2x for example i don't know what strategy it's called as but i mean that the 2x that cannot sustain i mean even you see i do 2.5 but still you know you will have more more stops but you understand the big picture right i mean uh, when you when you try this for let's say like a thousand cycles right i mean how many you are winning how many you are losing you, you have to have that kind of a conviction otherwise you 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 cannot sustain yeah so that's that's actually a great segue because you shortly in, in my little timeline of the notes here i wrote you started scaling up in 2022 and I I get what you're saying when you say that like about uh being able to mentally like train yourself to take those losses cuz like I used to get dogged on a little bit for being too conservative because um 
I, as my account grew, I would like reduce my my max risk because I just couldn't stomach those big losses. You know, like I right. It, it sucks regardless of how big your account is. It sucks to lose twenty thousand dollars. Of in a course, day. yeah, hundred percent. So, so coming back when I said like you know I was managing other people's money, I thought like you know uh, if I have all of these things in one place, then you know it's easy to easy to like you know what you call uh, I mean access and uh, easy to trade. So that's when the concept of hedge fund came into picture. I started venturing last year, like a, like a year ago, saying that like you know I wanted to start an hedge fund. I reached out to a couple of people uh, you know they were again gracious enough to give the contact resources i was uh, so there were a couple of things came to my mind uh, meaning uh, going through a traditional route uh, of uh, hiring a attorney you know by fund formation the documents subscriptions ppms right uh, you know he will ask you 100 questions you know if you go to traditional route uh, the attorney is always there uh, meaning uh, uh, and uh, the cost might be little less, uh, you know, depending on which attorney you're choosing because he will form the two companies. Uh, one is for the fund itself, one is for the general partner and all of those things, right? Um, but, uh, but, you, but, you know, that's a traditional route. I mean, what I experienced, right? What I experienced, uh, I went through the traditional route because I wanted to keep my cost low uh, for at least one or two years, so that uh, so that you know the fund formation cost cannot just uh, you know uh, you know wipe my account. That the, the you know uh, it, it it would be expensive. But uh, uh, then the second uh, the idea behind that was when I was talking to again my CPA and all these people. What she you know what she mentioned was first one two years, like I mean even two to three years. Uh, uh, all your investors will be your close friends and family whom you know them for a long time if you chose any kind of an online provider the cost will be super high which i don't disagree actually it is true you know if you ch- but what happened for me was once i started launching the fund <laughs> believe it or not the strangers are coming asking uh, you know can i invest from the day one uh, when i say strangers right i do have a discord um, you know I, I i i posted in there like i mean i was running for like two three years uh, we had a telegram first and you know the discord was uh, you know it was easy to maintain kind of a stuff right so they're asking can you just manage like you know this small money uh, now i don't know them i never met them so but i have what i have to do is i have to send some kind of a documentation to them meaning first name last name date of birth social security number your address and everything but when i ask this sensitive data how many people are willing to give this kind? i am not ready to give my details to my cpa itself how would they give me to a stranger but the, but is the, collecting that information is necessary right meaning to because we are, this is a fund right so when i so uh, well, right you have to you have to satisfy a b- because of the rules around marketing you have to satisfy like a prior relationship yes, absolutely. requirement i have to i have to do that. okay yeah, I just wanted to clarify that right. for the listeners. So, so. Th- then there is a platform called Repool. Um, I honestly think uh, Repool is a great platform. What what it will do is, you know, the fund formation, they will take care of it. Uh, see, uh, there are a lot of steps involved, right? If you go to the traditional route, so for example, right, they will open an LLP, they will open, they, they'll open an LP, they'll open an uh, GP account, uh, they'll open an EAN, EAN number, uh, employer identification number, then they'll give it to you. You go to the bank by taking these PPM documents, you have to open two bank accounts, one for LP, one for LLC. And, uh, you know, but trust me, I went six times to my local bank uh, because it was easy for me to access for wire transfer, this and that. And they will not understand what is an LP means, limited partnership bank. They have no idea. I went six times. It's waste of my time, waste of my resource, right? And back and forth between the lawyers, it's like, you know, he will ask you some small question. He will come back after one week. So I was like six, seven months uh, waiting for the responses to form. Uh, but Repool, what the, and, and again, let's say if somebody, a new investor comes through, I am responsible to take the all the information, fill up for them. And before I can accept the funds into, in, uh, into, the, into the hedge fund. Right. This is the these and and again and we have to maintain some kind of a nav for these uh, these investors like a net asset value for each of the investors because not because not everybody comes on day one. Some people will add, some people will subtract, some people will do this. You know, we cannot maintain a human cannot do it. We need a dedicated CPA. 
right now uh, to do the uh, auditing you need a different company like you know you have to hire somebody right to do some kind of a uh, like you know edgar system you need to file uh, you know form d i think uh, if i'm not wrong then again you have to go back to your attorney there are a lot of manual steps in between that you are supposed to do before the fund comes up and live running but even when the fund uh, comes up and uh, live running you still have to maintain these things meaning if a new investor comes through you have to speak with them you know asking their first la first name last name all the details then you fill up uh, in what category they belong to so that they are coming into the fund you know are they accredited investors you know it's a, you know we only do a self certification right we cannot ask more more than that it's one of the classification right so we have to do that then then we, we then we sign it then he, then we'll send it to the investor he will sign it once the form comes through then they will they can do a wire transfer right so remember there are a lot of and uh, net asset value is not live meaning i cannot tell you know let's say after six months or something let's say he added funds every single month like a, you know 50000 every single month because i was doing well i cannot tell how much percentage return he made or after six or seven months it's a it's a manual task and my cpa is not ready to send these statements every single month uh, it's 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 tough Re what repool will do is right the fund formation they'll take care of it uh, you know by again there is a back and forth discussions that are expected to happen which is which is normal the repool will take care of it bank accounts they will create it you know it is fdic insured uh, just like the regular bank account the bank account is attached to repool itself right that's the it's a beauty right when a when a new uh, let's say you have an investor who wants to come in all you need to ask is what is the email address so you provide that email address in the repool and uh, the repool will send an email to him and you will the, they have to accept that they read the fund description then they will put the first name last name their social which is all ssl encrypted uh, right uh, and then they will they will get a instructions on how to send the funds to the funds to the bank once the fund comes through once the funds come then they will notify me saying that you know uh, uh, dear fund manager, Manager, we have the 50,000 from ABC, right? All the information is stored, meaning first name, last name, social security number, date of birth, address, everything is, uh, is already taken care by Repul. All I am caring is trading. I'm spending my time, what kind of trades that I'm supposed to do, as opposed to worrying about the small things. The Repul will also take care of Form D and uh, any kind of, uh, you know, regularity uh, stuff that they need to worry about, uh, they will take care of it. The only thing that they, they won't do is auditing auditing they will not they will not do it yeah you know but again to begin repool it is expensive to and uh, trust me when i say and 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 one other thing that i forgot is repool maintains nav for each individual in a real time like meaning so let's say I invested 50000 today the investor is coming back after one week and it you know i made let's say three percent right 1500 bucks it cuts my fees and everything it's it will show the live detail because they have access to the my trading platform they have access to my funds right uh, so understand this is this is a this is a great thing you know that the, that they have and uh, 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 let's say for me because the bank accounts are on my name i took a third party uh, because you know you have to you have to stop a lot of fraud things right because see i'm responsible see i can go to the uh, bank and uh, write a check like because i'm the authorized check uh, you know signer they will accept and they'll give me the fund but that becomes like a fraud to avoid this there are third parties which will say okay we need a third party sign on these two accounts uh, so that there is no fraud involved i took that service again that costs some money like a two three hundred bucks a month so whenever a check comes through uh, the bank will not uh, cash it right away i have to take the permission from this third party that third party will verify you know why are you taking this out is this your fees or is this some other expense that's coming up i i did it deliberately to give my investors an assurance that you know the bank account is not my like you know i'm not withdrawing just like that you know i have a third party who's monitoring this but when you go to repool repool will ask you this question you know it's not your uh, like you know the uh, two percent fees or it's not a performance fees why are you requesting this right so it it combines all of these things in one place and i honestly even though it was it was expensive when you when you combine all of these things right uh, i honestly wish that i went with repool 
uh, that's my that's my opinion because of their platform because of their uh, you know because of their uh, like you know the, the the user interface because of their automated stuff uh, before any investor comes through uh, you know i wish i went through repool but but i mean uh, i i took the hard step of going through the traditional route because i wanted to keep my fund cost uh, like you know to bare minimum in the first two years yeah, I talked to uh, I talked to Kevin from Repool, and that's actually we started talking probably what like about last year about Repool, and um, yeah, they have an awesome platform. And for people who don't know, Repool is kind of like a hedge fund as a service, and like and like Nash said, they do the corporate structure, they set up all of, like the web apps, um, all, all the monitoring with everything except for like he said auditing. And I think they can point you in the right direction if you need like a third party auditor. But like it's one of those things where they 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 want someone to check their work it's not you know but um yeah so i yeah i i honestly i i think i should reach out to kevin and see if you want to have another phone call uh because it maybe even come on the show because he yeah they're doing so it's really awesome what they're doing yeah. and they're, uh Right, auditing is auditing is from Jeffries, uh, but again, you know that's expensive. And uh, even if I go to the traditional route, it is still expensive. It's the same cost. But again, you have to understand, right? Uh, a new investor comes through. How much time I'm spending? Like I'm spending a minimum two to three hours, right? Like taking the information, uh, signing my form, scanning it, sending it back to them. They have to sign it. They have to send it back to me. Repool is doing it. Like a docu sign is there. I'm, I'm I'm venturing the docu sign side, but again, my work is increased if i were to have a repool i wouldn't have have to have all do all these things you know if anybody thinks they have to seriously consider repool but again uh, another thing that i want to mention about uh, opening a hedge fund right i know my fund did not start uh you know it is going to be live from june 1 but you you understand what you're getting into right right you have to, meaning uh, i don't i'm just speaking for my perspective right the amount of work that uh, that that you're going to have to do uh, you know uh, to to get some kind of a 20% gain you, you, it may not be it may not be that much unless unless you reach to certain level like you know meaning if you have like 2 million 3 million fund it's 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 not worth it uh, and and again everybody starts at one point right i mean i'm starting at that 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 level but again it has to it has to grow to a meaningful level plus i need to bring up you know a minimum certain expectation for my investors so that they can keep uh, you know investing or like you know they, they i have to satisfy them also so yeah i was it is i was talking yeah. to my cpa the other day and i mentioned the idea of a hedge fund and an incubator fund and different things like that and he said that uh he was like, do you remember whenever you cash out the crypto and you came to me and you were like, you don't want to work for anybody ever again? He's like, if you do a hedge fund, you're going to be working for hundreds of people. <laughs> hundreds of people, yes, yes, yes. So, and and also understand human psychology, right? I mean, it is it is not easy to convince somebody to invest their money in the stock market. That too, when you say that, you know, you have to clearly disclose the saying that, you know, you could lose everything. I have to mention, I'm telling the guys who are investing, I'm telling them, invest in the money that you're ready to lose. I am not honored, I'm not promising anything, but my money is my money will also be there growing with you. The only reason why I'm doing this is, you know, I want to grow my money plus, uh, you know, along with other people's money also. But um, again, there are risks everywhere. You have to understand that there is no such thing as a free lunch. There is risks everywhere. And, uh, you know, these guys, initial investors who are my friends and family, they're betting on me. They, everybody says, we don't know anything about the, we are just betting on you. You know, you, you, and, and I, as I said, I manage their money this year, we, and we did 27% as of uh, April 30. Uh, you know, and, and I and I stopped uh, doing that because all the money is coming into the fund right now. So, um, someone asked about expenses and uh, assets under management. I do know re when I spoke to Kevin last year from Repool, he wanted I think it was twenty thousand a year for all yes. of the services and formation and stuff. Right. Do you feel? Can you can you share what? you're saving by going by piecing so, everything together yourself so basically what would happen is uh, 20000 is the repool cost uh, my my cost begin uh, depending on whom you choose right it comes to like 11 12 grand 
it's not far but again that 8000 uh, you have to understand right? it's a journey for me meaning i did not know lot more about repool and i was i was just thinking that you know these are all added features which which i don't need uh, uh, when i was thinking but i was totally wrong everybody wants to see their money right? at the end of the day end of the week end of the month you know meaning how much money it went up uh, maintaining that navs is not easy my cpa will not do it meaning uh, she will send it every quarter only uh, and uh, again monthly is but repool does it live uh, i as i said that i wish i went with them uh, and 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 ongoing cost is also 20000 every single month and that i felt little bit expensive ongoing cost could be and without the auditing so the uh, ongoing expense if you go with a traditional cpa is like you know it's it's like one fourth actually uh, it's like it will not cost you should not cost you more than 5 6 for cpa again uh, you don't have lot of services from uh, cpa you you only get uh, uh, main Maintaining NAVs only, nothing else. Uh, again, if you have to form, if you have to file any kind of SEC kind of forms, right? You still have to go to third party. You need to pay more money. Repool will take care of this. So. Uh, Ongoing expenses is 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 kind of a high, so Repool wants uh, to be there with them. I think if I'm not wrong, for three years. Uh, you know, if you start, you have to be there with them for three years. Then you can think of doing it. But again, as I said, right, if you are confident enough, um, and you know, uh, meaning you will love the platform. I I will uh, you know no uh, no disagreement there. And uh, to answer to finish, uh, Theta Gang always wins question. What arm did you launch with? Because that was one of my issues with Repool was that at twenty thousand a year in the two the common two twenty structure, I needed a million dollars just to pay the it's overhead. Just a- and like, and my network, like my close friends and family, are not a wealthy group of people. And so, like, to raise a million dollars of outsider funds just to pay the expenses was like such a huge mountain to climb at that point so yeah so what arm did you launch with so my money is going uh you know i i i moved uh, uh three quarters of a million three seven fifty k and i raised uh, 2.2 so far and uh we are oh yeah Shit. we are we are we are i am gonna i'm gonna close at 2.5 uh outside money um, meaning, uh, uh, meaning, I, 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 I told the guys like three months we are gonna hold on. Uh, I, I, I no longer. Big, there are big guys. Believe it or not, they're they're negotiating with me. There is a, there is a, there is a, you know somebody who is very close to me. He wants to put in a million bucks. Uh, he was asking me if the structure can be done like uh, something else other than two twenty, and I told. I was going to ask you, is it the standard 2 and 20 yeah, structure? Yeah, it's a standard 2 and 20, but I told the guys, it's I cannot negotiate on that. I mean, it's uh, it's a, it's too much work. Uh, it, you have to be worth your time. Uh, I, I will not negotiate. I thought for a while, it I wanted to put it as 225, but, uh, you know, it's it, it, I wanted to keep it in line with the uh, other uh, hedge funds that I saw. So it is 220. Um, can you talk about uh, the psychology behind it so like it's tough to manage your own money is the psychology different managing your friends and family's money and then also is it different managing like internet strangers? oh it is it is very different i mean you have to somehow convince them and and when i say convince them i'm not i'm not begging them to like you know please put it here you make this kind of money i'm not saying anything i'm telling them uh, I showed them uh, uh, because the, because the fund has no history, right? Because it's the beginning. I showed my life balance, what I've done in the last two years, right? As you guys know, right? I mean, I did extremely well in 2022, right? So 2023 is the same track. I mean, I'm in the same track to do it. So I showed the last two years, right? I started doing this, this like 26 months and I showed the 26 months were, uh, what I did with the zero days to expiration. Live data, I, I'm not showing them an Excel, like some kind of a fund manager who shows an excel like a projection you do you make this i'm not doing that i'm showing them my live account logging into in live person right so once they see this so they believe saying that you know they, there is a strategy that is legit it is working whatever is doing uh, you see zero days to expiration is primarily but understand that i also do a put selling one standard deviation you know uh, uh, you know aggressively selling and you know by adjusting them by repositioning them uh, so i do that just to bring some uh, positive cash flow every single month so so I, I do that stuff. So we, they see all of these things and uh, they felt comfortable that, you know, my money is vested here. Like, you know, I'm talking like, you know, one million, right, as of today. Uh, so when I'm doing this kind of stuff, they have, a, you know, 
they know me because of my my poker skills also because we play a lot of uh, you know the poker i wanted to become a professional poker player also so how conservative i am and how aggressive i am depending on the situation right meaning in a poker like when you play plo right you know how when you can be aggressive right when you can be defensive so uh, they saw me this for the last 10 years right and they are confident that uh, you know i will be able to do well that's why these initial round of people who jumped in are the my close friends and family all right, uh, vital sign. Go ahead and raise your hand because um, I was actually going to ask your que- your uh, I was going to ask his question to you. Uh, there's a lot of discussion around the edge is gone and the death of zero DTE. So, um, and that was vital sign. So I'm going to let sure. him take it over sure, and ask please. you his question. Yeah. Hey, everyone. This is Chris. Uh, my pronouns are she, they. And uh, yeah, a lot of haters have been saying that zero DT is over. It's a dead trade. You're going to get gamma blasted. Um, I was wondering, what would you say to that? How would you ease someone's worries? So, if 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 zero days to expiration is gone, we have we 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 can find something else. Meaning, like you know, you have we have I have confidence that uh, we'll be able to find something that is viable where we can do a double digit return in in options market. There are plenty of strategies. So, you know you may not have see zero days to expiration is like you know you have uh, significant return compared to other strategies but uh, you know i am not too worried uh, see we have we have to see understand the cycles meaning when i say cycles right in i watch wix intraday right it goes from 16 to 19 meaning the option prices will start increasing both sides right you have you you have to experience these cycles i have seen a lot of cycles and uh, for me the biggest problem is biggest issue that i see uh, with the zero days to expiration is option you know the stops not being executed number one and the slippage if these two happens meaning let's say if your stop is at 150 if it starts filling at four dollars or five dollars right that means you are done meaning uh, you 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 in a month or so you will realize that this is not going to be viable but for now i'm not seeing those kinds of days did it increase uh, like you know the more number of slippage yes the answer is yes but at the same time it will reduce your overall return uh, but th- that's again right you are you are you are thinking of uh, double digit returns when you do a zero days to expiration for me the risk is acceptable okay thank you for the explanation yeah thanks for coming up man so yeah that that, that seems to be like the hot topic right now is uh the um is the edge gone and you know because for i mean for years we were doing just mechanical tranching you know it was uh pretty mindless just options it was just the option chain and the clock it was all we really needed to enter but um with all of the limelight and excitement around zero dte uh there some people feel that there's a shift i personally just think it's um just a drawdown period you know it's it can't be great forever the party has to stop yeah the party has to stop i there is no disagreement and and at the same time at the same time i know a lot of people who were putting uh, were not putting stops who had a mental stop are gonna, are, <coughs> are are wiped out already meaning they 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 uh, you know <coughs> the net link is significantly reduced yeah and then um uh yeah and then you have the people that uh like to roll their zero dt positions and i got that was like the flavor of the week for a few weeks now but i think there's been some humble pie that was served and uh (laughs) yeah right 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 right. um if anybody has any other questions put them in the chat or you can raise your hand and jump on stage uh so um are you, so you so you're doing full time full on zero DTE with the ninety DTA ninety DT short puts on like a handful of big caps and in indexes, right? Right. Yes. And uh, there's another audience question of what is your annual expenses for onboarding new investors? I know they asked about on repool, but I think that's all lumped in because like repool does like the blue sky. The blue yeah. sky filings and different things like that. And like, that's another headache. You know, if you get someone from a different state that you've never accepted before, right? that's another and document. Then, yeah. 
Right. Exa exactly. Exactly. Yes. Yes. So it's uh, you know somebody was asking about the about the expense. Uh, I believe year over year we are looking at a minimum twenty uh, grand uh, expense. Uh, that that sh that will not include uh, uh, any kind of auditing. And uh, if what I ca what I am hearing is auditing will be like an auditing itself is like a extremely expensive kind of a thing. But you know when when a fund audits right. I mean when when a fund gets audited, it gives you more confidence for the investors actually. You know so. Is there a requirement for uh, how frequently you get audited, or uh, there is no requirement? So there you could no go, you could potentially run and never audit yourself. That is correct. That is correct. Unless you want to go to, go to like you know, let's say you you get a limelight and you know some big investor comes through, right? I mean, like you know, some bigger than like a five million bucks or something, they might question. Let's say any institution wants to put some kind of money because of the returns that we are showing, right? So it, they might ask, saying that you know we want to see an audited report, like a third party independent report, right? So that's where these 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 issues will come into picture. And I I plan to get audited. You know, I want to spend that money. You know. Even if my return is little less, meaning, you know, even if I make less money as a as a general partner, but uh, I I want to get audited for sure. Uh, do you feel comfortable sharing your return in 2022? Uh, sure. So as of now, uh, 2022. Yeah, that's I did. Return. I, I see. I managed several accounts. Uh, when I average all of those things, I made fifty percent plus. In my own accounts, I made uh, you know seventy eight percent one account, hundred and ten percent in my in my IRA account. In a non IRA, I did about like sixty seventy. But on an average, across all the accounts that I was managing, I did fifty plus. Okay, and then Moneymaker kind of expanded on the question and mentioned that like he feels that like two and twenty is a little crazy for your friends and family, and why not just kind of hold the edge to yourself if you've got that kind of net lick, you know? For well, you hold on, let me back up. You mentioned capping it at two and a half million, so that would be what fifty thousand a year at two percent. So the thing is, uh, if he, if he's asking why you are charging two twenty for your friends and family, do. Uh, uh, are you are you saying that it should be free for the friends and family, or are you saying uh, why are you even taking money from friends and family, right? See, it's the it's the I wanted to uh, be uh, some kind of a money manager for a long time because you remember, right? My my career was in finance, but I was never into the stock market. I was a long term investor, right? When options came, when I started making money, my vision was always there to to manage other people's money. Trust me when I say it is not easy. Meaning, like you know, the psychology has to be completely different mindset because you need to start looking at numbers, like you know, as a percentage basis. Uh, it's it's not easy to convince, but people are trusting based with you know they're betting on me that I'll do something, and uh, and and uh, and I will say this right. I mean, uh, I plan to be here in this space for a long time, and uh, you know, even my, even my returns would might be less. I'm okay with it, but I want to stay in this space for for you know long time. It's it's just a, you know ambition that 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 you want to pursue. Yeah, I, I think I I don't know if this was his intention on asking that, but I I kind of view it in a different way. And part of the reason why I've I've never really progressed into starting my own fund is that like for fifty thousand, is it worth the extra fifty thousand a year? And because like I know the stress and stuff that in the tool it can take, is it worth capping it at two and a half million and taking an extra fifty k a year? You know, it, with the numbers that we're producing. Yeah. So, money maker, uh, you can you can please contact me. Uh, you know, d please DM me. You know, we, we'll chat. We'll chat. Uh, my my view of um, you know. See, I I don't know what what I should say, but but I'll say like few things, right? Nothing against to against to my friend circle or anybody, right? Um, there is a lot of money uh, that people are putting in the real estates or like you know the hotels, uh, some kind of a liquor store. There is an excessive cash that is sitting, and they 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 want to they want to try uh, by putting in alternate alternate funds. Like so, hedge funds is 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 the criteria, you know. Why not? I mean, you know, one of us is is intelligent enough to is thinking it. Like I'm thinking myself. Like I can maintain the funds and I can return them. That believe it or not, they are happy with eight to ten percent. If I can guarantee that, but I no, nothing is guaranteed. That's what I'm saying. Then there is always a risk. If I guarantee something, that will become like a Bernie Madoff, right? I'm not guaranteeing anything. They are saying eight to ten percent after all the expenses. We are happy. 
I, and we can do that. We can do that with simply with the, you know, the put selling, managing your risk well. You know, you don't need zero days to expiration to get eight to ten percent. I am sure pretty much everybody agrees in this in this group. Um, do you? Uh, Koi wants to know if you use any kind of signals or have any tips. I I I don't use any signals. I have. I am not a TA guy yet. Meaning, uh, you know, the the you know technical analysis is not my cup of tea. But when I when I do the zero days to uh, you know expiration trades, right? I I don't look at the charts. I have specific time frames that I enter. Meaning, I don't 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 follow those times also. But whenever I feel like, meaning I try to go to every thirty minutes, uh, because of the and and because I rely on my own data. So I stop doing nine thirty entries like you know for a long time now. So I'm not entering at the open. I'm starting at ten, like you know, say ten ten or four, depending on how the day goes along, and I I enter like twelve times. Got it. Um, is there any other questions as we wrap this up here? Looking back here to make sure I didn't miss anybody. Um, so do you have any kind of like any advice for someone that may be either venturing into trading as a profession or uh, either individually or as a prospective fund manager? Oh, oh, sure, sure. See, I was just laughing looking at the, <laughs> looking at Carlos. <laughs> Can I invest in the fund? <laughs> yeah, no, hold on, yeah, let me pause. Uh, Carlo, a disclaimer, um, this is not a marketing episode for a fun. No, this no, is no, informational I'm, purposes. No, no, I'm only. just laughing because like, you know, <laughs> now I can honestly say that this, I have to say this. CD ACS is my, one of the mentor. Okay. So I have, <laughs> that's why I'm laughing. Like, you know, I reach out to him time to time. You know, I, I know he's not active now, but I reached out to him time to time, asking him. Uh, and he was gracious to share his, uh, you know, the Excel for 2021, some part of 2022. And I learned a lot of stuff from him, right? So the advice, what, uh, you know, what, what you can, what I can give for a new trader, right? Please have a mentor. See, reach out to them. They will not, see, in, in, in our Discord, uh, right? They are not charging you. You know, they are spending time with you, like, you know, five, 10 minutes. It's not a big deal, right? And have question, like, you know, ask the legitimate, genuine question. Don't don't ask, how do I make 100% in one year? It's not going to happen, right? Genuine questions. Your psychology has to be changed. Start small, like, you know, increase the credit targets in a regular intervals. Just don't go like, you know, uh, suddenly you start from 10,000. Your drawdown could be so crazy. Like, you know, you, I mean, uh, you, you, you have to train your brain. You know, accept that, you know, these losses are common. You have to experience all the cycles in the market, meaning up and down. You know, the green days are great, but at the same time, you need to be able to handle uh, the stress levels when it when it is a downside as well. So, uh, you, you, you know, you know, you know, buddy, I mean, I, I did mention this to you a long time that I was I was venturing into this hedge fund space. So, yeah, thank you. Oh, yeah, for sure. Um yeah, Car Carlo is awesome. He, uh, he, we talk a good bit too, and like, yeah, I definitely have vented, and he's talked me off the ledge more than once. Uh, Gecko wants to know what your thoughts are if zero DT has a high variance in returns, and how you can minimize. So, it so. my what I see again, a lot of people don't don't agree to what I'm going to say, but it is it is what I notice, right? See, a lot of people target one dollar credit target. I don't do that. Meaning I'm I'm going if you if you guys know me for a long time, uh, my initial tranches starts at 50, 55 cents, even 60 cents. I don't I rarely go to 70, 80 cents. When in a low weeks environment, it's a different story. But uh, you know, we are at 18, 19, like 20s as well. It's reasonable. We are able to get 50, 55 cents. I know that those will get stopped out uh, more often, but what would happen is they also decay well in the, in the in the in the beginning of the day. So, but but again, you the number of contracts will increase. If I go for one dollar, if I'm doing a thousand dollar credit, like I need to do ten contracts. If I do a fifty cents, I need to do twenty contracts, right? And buying power will be high also. So for me, the buying power is not an issue. I I only have a fixed as I said, like I'm, I sell eighteen thousand credit in a day to day basis. So for me, that eighteen thousand is possible with the funds that I have. Do you use any kind of second order I, I, Greeks? I don't use 
any order breaks and uh, but i watch uh, what is my delta sitting uh, let's say if i enter three or four tranches right i will watch my delta overall delta on all these four or five tranches uh, to see where it is sitting once i have like let's say minus 200 plus that means let's say it's a minus 200 that means i am expecting uh, the spx to come down few points it goes to 400 i don't do anything you know i don't adjust i don't add any like you know delta adjustments or anything but what would what would i do is like i will try monitoring uh, let's say if it goes to 400 to 600 in between right it oscillates that means my pnl is kind of swinging up and down right uh, for for like last few months i stopped watching my pnl tab also because it was it was unnecessary because we are not taking any profit why should i why should i look at it so what i will do is let's say it's minus 600 and it is sitting like that for like let's say one two hours like that meaning it, it comes down it goes back to minus 600 then you are about to get stopped out what i will do is i will go back to my tranches and say okay which position is hurting let's say if i have 20 contracts i got 60 cents and it is sitting let's say at one dollar right now that means dollar 50 is my stop so what i will do is i will close 10 contracts at one dollar and i will keep the remaining 10 contracts at 1.5 so what would I, what this will do is i'm giving up uh, like you know thousand dollar in the tranche but uh, even if my stop gets hit uh, what would happen is my loss uh, would be a near break even meaning you have to understand i gave at least one and a half hour for this tranche to work it did not work through so i'm, I'm doing these adjustments and I, I will also do some kind of other adjustments like you know adjusting the stops to let's say if it's 150 right what i will do is i will accept some uh, uh, stops at 120 then uh, uh, move some other stops at 150 then i'll give more time like a dollar 80 for remaining uh, you know remaining uh, remaining kind of uh, shots this way what would happen is even 120 might hit very fast but 150 is like regular stop and 180 you are giving more time even if the first two gets hit 180 you will you have more uh, you know e even 180 180 survives so what would happen is uh, the tranche becomes green for that for that day my only goal you know th this is how i was able to do well in 2022 because because you know because of these small adjustments here and there and uh, and uh, i noticed we have to watch the delta so carefully uh, you know and if the delta doesn't cross like you know 200 i don't i don't care uh, you know I, I you know order i just monitor order like uh, you know how the how, whether it's getting executed or not you know yeah and i think that your your are uh, your adjustments are probably the reason that you're outpacing all of us this year too <laughs> like you're, you're you've become like a meme in david son's discord where you know it's like oh we're all getting slaughtered it won't take long for nash to drop in and say he's glad to be green yeah yeah i know i mean see again th th this is this is again went back to um you know i know a lot of see there is a uh, lot of people use automation kind of stuff right meaning uh, you know i'm not talking about one service but uh you know everybody has some kind of a uh, you know different different providers right see you you have to understand guys right i mean i see nothing offensive nothing against you or what you're doing you guys are absolutely stunning and great right but understand right i'm spending a lot of time in analyzing what the trade is doing you know i i have you know uh, if somebody i i don't want to share it here but i track my tranches very like you know 100 percent to see okay this this is the first tranche, this is the second tranche, this is the third tranche. which one is in trouble how do i make it green what i'm supposed to do uh, you know these are dynamic decisions and i don't think the program can you know i can i can i cannot put it in a piece of paper and write it in a program so if you are using any kind of a uh, like you know the program or anything right you should be happy because we are not far off meaning you know if i make let's say if i make 17 percent pcr in last year you might have made 14 15 percent we are not far you know you should be happy you know no i understand completely because you know i made uh, my projection to of what i am to make is still even at, at half of the performance of 2022 i'm still at something that i can never imagine making it like a nine to five absolutely i i completely agree i mean when i speak to other people 2022 is the worst year for a lot of people just imagine the mutual funds traditional fund. my you know 401k got slaughtered right 2022 i mean everybody is the same thing and uh, my cpa could not believe when i sent the statements i told him like you know uh, it was one week before expiration or something right i, I told him that i made money he was like how did you make money uh, you know can i tell this to my clients they'll reach out to and like please i am i'm not there yet you know i'm not ready this was this was when i was filing taxes you know for two, 2022 was one of the greatest years that i cannot forget i'm i'm trying to do the same thing for 2023 
and i'm on target as of now so but hopefully hopefully the it will the it will continue and uh, you know i will be able to make the same kind of a return what i made in 2022 Um so there's some discussion on slippage and I slippage is like that one uncontrollable variable in zero dt trading. Do you have anything to speak to is is the slippage? I I I have see you know I use e-trade I kept mentioning a lot of times right. So e-trade what would happen is let's say my stop is 150 right I use limit right meaning uh, you know 150 160 and you can tell me or oh, if it skips through what would you do? And uh, trust me when I say it did skips through three or four times this year. For me it is acceptable. so let's say if i put 150 at a market price it was filling 180 190 dollars like you know 160 depending on depending on where the house of price adjustment is going on what e trade does is right it starts activating at 140 or 145 <clears throat> the reason is simple i think they they their pricing is based on the the, the bid or ask not on my uh, you know not what we are seeing uh, so majority of the time my fills will happen uh, you know uh, at a reasonable uh, reasonable accepted level that i'm that i'm willing to let go these uh, these things uh, i don't use market stops but again you have to understand if i am there at my desk you know 2022 i became prisoner uh, like you know i i was there uh, at my desk all the times so if i am not there for whatever reason then you know the i i would switch to market orders like a dollar 50 market orders right and again uh, you know because when i'm not there and the second thing to note is the later entries like after 230 or 230 3 o'clock if i have to enter those will have a market order only because they can they can skip through more often than uh, than the morning tranches and um i'm just reading through the chat here so you're you're going to be using interactive brokers i know you mentioned that earlier um i don't think karen the super trader even is applicable because she just used accounting magic to yeah, keep the ball was, rolling she, she was um, doing like you know 60 days out and selling the well it, it's not even that it was that like she would when she rolled it didn't right. it, she was in the, like the camp of rolling isn't a loss and like it was just fancy accounting uh, yeah yeah And yeah, and and yeah. As far as zero DT slippage, I I personally view it as like it's cost of doing business. It sucks. Um, Tammy, uh, Tammy Chambliss, Ben Decker, and I have talked to CBOE a couple times, and should be getting on the phone with them again and trying to like brainstorm different ideas on how to uh, minimize minimize the whenever the liquidity disappears and creates those wide bid ask spreads. But I don't think they've ever really put anything into place. just yet. Yeah, um yeah, right. Let's go back. All right, I'm going to wrap it up with this last one here. Amy asked, uh you cuz you mentioned and I think psychology is I think psychology plays a bigger role in trading than than the capital does sometimes. Yeah. And she uh you mentioned yoga earlier in the show. Yes. Do you have any other resources that you like to uh keep your brain in check? Like any books? Uh anything else uh, similar to yoga anything you like to do just side hobbies yeah so so you know i spend my time 9:30 to 4 uh, definitely at my desk uh, watching all these things and believe it or not i sleep at 4:05 or every single day uh, you know for 40 50 minutes like an hour or something i i sleep because it's uh, the brain gets so heated up and uh, i have to give credit to my wife for for pushing me you know into doing this kind of a yoga because what would happen is it when the market is going down or up like against your way my heart doesn't pound you know it stopped i will only care to go and see the order page to see whether my stops are hitting or not because i use a limit orders right as i said if i'm at my desk i'll use my limit orders to make sure those are filling if they miss for some reason let's say the you know 150 misses to 225 for example you know it's fine i'll go back and check it right away that 225 to 275 285 because for me i want to get this done as soon as possible i will never accept 230 right away because i will give see if if it is lost 75 cents i will give another 75 cents for it to you know come back because sometimes it will come back sometimes it won't my loss might be a little bit more than accept it's okay as i said right it's acceptable for me because because 50% like you know all the stops are hitting within my parameters so it's it's okay for me got it all right i think it was an awesome episode very a lot of information for even just from a personal 
trading perspective and uh, the hedge fund route and becoming more of a professional trader for other yeah, people's money. Guys, thank you very much for, for the opportunity, Kirk. And, you know, I hope, uh, you know, uh, I enlightened few people here and, you know, who motivated some of the guys. And uh, as I said, right, if you have, uh, you know, if you have to reach somebody, right, I mean, choose a mentor. I mean, you don't, I mean, I, I, you, you know, you don't need to choose me. I have few mentors I mentioned openly here, uh, meaning I did not mention the names, but, uh, you know, I, 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 I loved it when Carlos asked me that question, but I, I have to say he's one of my mentors. So please reach out to your mentors. You know, there are there are great resources, great friends like, you know, who are here and, uh, you know. Yeah, friends, friends are definitely important, especially after this month that we've had. <laughs> so. All right, cool. Um, all right, I will uh, catch everybody next time. I'm going to reschedule with uh, Dale Perryman, and I'm going to reach out to Kevin too. I think Kevin sure, might be sure. a good you, guest you can for, invite uh, Repo, from Repo. But, um, <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But, uh, yeah, I appreciate everybody joining us, and until next time, I will talk to everybody later. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Good night, okay? Good night, guys. Bye-bye.